And happy International Women's Day to every woman who is under this tent and to all other women in St. Kitts and Nevis, be they your sisters, mothers, aunts, grandmothers, whoever they may be to you, significant others, etc. Now, I listen to Dawn Mills, who is ably doing the duty of our MC this morning, and she did her quotation from the second chapter of Genesis, and I found it interesting. Uh, but at the same time, I would like to share with you what could be a different angle in terms of how we look at women. And much has been said about the role that women play in our community of St. Kitts and Nevis. Much has also been said by Ms. Christopher in terms of the background to International Women's Day, which I will not repeat. And I will hasten to add, however, that even though we have achieved much over the last hundred years or so since we began celebrating International Women's Day in various forms, that we can point to the pursuit of education. We can also point to the decent work achievement for women within the global marketplace. We can also look at women in leadership, whether it's in academia, politics, science and technology, as well as um, all other areas of human endeavor. And we can say that because of that, we've come a mighty long way, much like how the old commercial for Virginia Slim's cigarettes used to be in the 1980s. You've come a long way, baby. Right. <laughs> However, there is still a lot of ground to cover. And if we are to take the United Nations target year of 2186, by which time we should achieve gender parity, then we have a problem. By extension, the sub-theme for International Women's Day states that we should have planet 50-50, meaning that we should have gender parity by the year 2030, which is also the signal year for the achievement of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. But then if we take in context the outcomes of the 1995 Beijing Conference on Women, we will notice that there are some 12 areas that we should be focusing on if we really wish to say we have achieved equality for women. And they are to focus on issues such as women and poverty, education and training of women, women and health, violence against women, women and armed conflict, women and the economy, women in power and decision making, institutional mechanisms for the advancement of women, human rights for women, women and the media, women and the environment, and least, last but not least, the girl child. How do you, we socialize our girl children? Do we treat them differently? Do we raise them with double standards? Are we setting a different set of rules for them than we have for male children? And I think for each and every one of us here in St. Kitts and Nevis, and by extension, all of the member states of the UN, we need to take a critical look at all of these benchmarks and assess for ourselves where are we now, where do we need to go, and how do we get there faster than the 2186, which I will be dead by, and most of you, unless you are more blessed than the rest of us, or even 2030 for that matter. Now, as we ponder what we've achieved, and we have done quite a bit here in St. Kitts and Nevis in terms of the appointment of women to positions in politics, in the diplomatic corps, in healthcare, social services, and so forth, there is still a long way to go. Gender parity cuts a lot deeper than that in terms of not just placing women in positions of leadership, but do we give them the respect that they deserve? Is the respect garnered in terms of pay, equal pay for equal work? There happens to be a Caribbean convention for CARICOM that we would have ratified years ago as it relates to that. But then at the same time, I look at um, parity, gender parity for women from the standpoint of uh, how do we see ourselves as women? We I find in St. Kitts and Nevis, I can't speak for the rest of the world, of but here in St. Kitts and Nevis, I have found, children. unfortunately, that women are sometimes the biggest critics of other women. Mm -hmm. And it is unfortunate. When we see the pervasive nature of social media in St. Kitts and Nevis, we wonder if we forget our womanhood and if we forget our femininity. Every single thing that we do is posted on Facebook and other social media outlets. And we don't seem to understand that we need to let what we post pass the test of accuracy, relevance, dignity, as well as respect for yourself and other women. 
And the unfortunate things, thing is that we are quite easy to put things on social media without any regard for their veracity. And then we sometimes forget that these things, once you put them out there, they're for posterity. And even if sense overcomes you and you go back and you delete those postings or the pages, somebody else might have taken a screenshot of the page already, and then you might get a letter from a lawyer taking you to court. And then your excuse can't be, well, I don't have it on my page anymore. And I put it up because everybody else was saying it. Either way is wrong. And I think when we would have achieved gender equality, it's at the point where we respect each other, respect womanhood. You respect yourself in the way you speak, in the way you dress, in the associations that you choose to have. Uh, most, if not all of us, would remember parental admonitions such as people are known by the company they keep, birds of a feather flock together. If you want to get ahead in life, you can't live in the same crab barrel. You won't get out of it for that matter because every other crab under you will pull you back down. And then there is also the paradox that we face in terms of women who try to achieve in spite of circumstances. Being told that you're the five letter word or six letter word beginning with B and ending with H. While if you're a man, you're told that you're aggressive and you're assertive and that you're a go-getter. Well, how is it if you're a woman and you have those qualities, then you get told that you're the B word? Or the other extreme, that you achieve because of academics, your record, your integrity, the faith a potential employer puts in you. But strangely enough, somebody is going to come back and tell you how you got your job, who you slept with, who is your godfather, who you stole a favor from. And you know what is the sad thing? Most of the time, it is women saying this about other women. And we have to change the national conversation in terms of that. We have to change the rhetoric in terms of that. I'm not telling you what I've read. I'm telling you what I experienced. But then it is for us as women to understand who you are fully and to step out in faith and with courage in spite of what the people around you say. To me, it matters more what is in you than what is around you. And so on this International Women's Day, I admonish all women to respect the femininity with which you have been endowed, to respect the potential that resides in each and every one of us, and to move forward. It is true some of us may look at women as a series of directly contrived antithesis. If you look at a song, for example, Dawn, our MC, such as the song She, from the soundtrack Notting Hill, you would see that in parts of it, um, the writer of the song, who is Charles Asvenor, he started out by saying, she may be the face I can't forget, a trace of pleasure or regret, maybe my treasure or the price I have to pay. He continues by saying, she may be the beauty or the beast, maybe the famine or the feast, may turn each day into a heaven or a hell. She who always seems so happy in a crowd, may come to me, uh, she whose eyes can be so private and so proud, no one's allowed to see them when they cry. Sounds like your mother's, eh? Okay, then he goes on to say, she may be the reason I survive, the why and wherefore I'm alive, the one I'll care for through the rough and rainy years. And then he comes to terms with the importance of woman by ending the song saying, me, I'll take her laughter and her tears and make them all my souvenirs. For where she goes, I've got to be. The meaning of my life is she. Isn't that profound? So again, on behalf of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, and more specifically the Department of Gender Affairs, it is my pleasure to wish each and every woman in St. Kitts and, and Nevis Idaho, a happy International Women's Day. Thank you for your attention.